I'm slacking on my responsibilities. Um, tennis hasn't been going great, but we're here to turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome back to Chicho Podcast. I am Justin Roberts. Just had a fresh haircut. Shout out my barber, Lulu. That's crazy. That's a crazy intro. <laughs> Feeling good. To my right is my boy, uh, Jody McGinley. Ball head, double specialist. Unnecessary. Awesome. Top 300 on the way. To his right, silent killer, Evan Zoo. Not ball head. Not ball headed. Um, don't forget, we have Pro Stringer. Code changeover, $100 off of Pro Stringer. And yeah, man, we are trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. We are almost there. I think we are like 1,600 right now. If you've been there before, if you like what you've been seeing, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, engage with us. We want to talk to you guys as much as we can. Ah, right, yeah, bro. Let's get started. Uh, let's shout out also Jonathan Morgan. So we'll do this every episode now. Shout out to Jonathan. He left a comment on the last episode. He commented on the Ben Lock episode. He said, great guests and great talking points in this episode. One thing you have promised us listeners is a conversation with your referee contact who could answer some of the burning questions you had in this episode. So, yeah, thank you for that comment, Jonathan, and we'll see if we can work on that. I don't know if we're uh, at the stage yet where he'll say yes to us, but um, we'll definitely try to work on that, see if we can get that going. If you want your comment to be featured on the episode, just drop a comment down below. Um, yeah, engage with us, whatever you see in this episode that you want to engage with, just go for it, and yeah, we'll feature you in the next episode. Yes, sir. Evan. Where you been, though? <laughs> I've been... I've been traveling a lot, <laughs> playing tennis, uh, mostly in Asia, but a little bit in the States. I haven't seen you guys that much. I've been slacking on my responsibilities. Um, tennis hasn't been going great, but we're here to turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you know, today... So they were at practice and uh, there was like a coach helping out for the day learning. And he said to Evan, like he said, like he asked maybe, asked me what my ranking was and I answered. And then he asked Evan what his ranking was. And Evan was like, yeah, like he said his ranking or whatever. And I said, yeah, but Evan, he, he was like 280. Like I was like, yeah, I know. Um, I used to follow Evan before he left the podcast. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Before he resigned. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah, I know Evans here obviously today. So, so we have hopefully we can get back on track. Tennis podcast, everything. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> life, life. <laughs> just circle it all the way around. Yeah, for sure. I got a question for you guys. We were just watching tennis here, and you mentioned Nicholas Jarry with the with the little nose. Um, what do you call it? Nose tape. Oh. The breathing. Like how? Like what are you willing to do? to like make it like what would get that percent. like how crazy would you mind looking on the court what did you ever said today um we're watching us open and i think oh <laughs> was it the dan evans match we watched yeah we were watching dan evans and castro that was just a crazy match like what longest match ever in yeah. us open history mm -hmm. but uh yeah we we're just right after the match like dan evans was like signing taking pictures signing aut autographs and stuff and we're like oh, i was like oh we gotta play us open next year uh, I'll play 30 weeks in a row in Egypt if that's what it takes because <laughs> like you see Jerry with the, the nose tape would you rock that easily okay if you know for sure yeah, it's healthy that, that's for breathing okay no, okay okay he probably has like a would uh, you would you wear the shades like to I think I'm yeah I think I would if, if we're if, is like, it helping yeah yeah, yeah okay would. you know for sure it's helping you yeah Okay, let's take it a step further. Would you rock goggles? Like the... What's that for? The strap. What's that for? For your eyesight. You have bad eyes, but... <laughs> <laughs> the My eyes are 2020. <laughs> the goggles are not for your sight, bro. Yes, they are. Who like, if you goggles? had bad eyes, who like... Wears, who wears... Who... Alafia Yanni wore goggles. War. He doesn't wear goggles. Because he just put... This is, this is the point. The point is a hypothetical, you're being, Jody. You're is being it? ridiculous. You can no, no, I'm not being it. ridiculous. The question is, how crazy are you willing to look in public... No, I can look and pretty be the crazy, best. but I just don't think that's very functional because you can just wear um, contacts. This guy's not fun, bro. I hate when I give a what hypothetical he, and then he makes play, it so serious, though. What if you play a year with contacts and then a year with goggles and a year with goggles, you're like, 
way better winning percentage way better yeah, yeah. your hundred spots higher that. i will do that though i have to talk what about i seen some people with the high high socks like the doubles mind with the like, con le, less i don't even yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. up the knee highs fuck i have skinny legs bro. <laughs> <laughs> i think i would still i think i would still I, i'm willing to look pretty ridiculous so results so. over fashion over looking like a respectable look ridiculous so I think I can, yeah, I have ball head. What do you mean? Ball head is not bad, bro. You can run a ball head. And I can come off the court after, like... Michael uh, Jordan was bald. Kobe right, Bryant was bald. Everyone's a ball head. Everyone's telling you to play tennis without the head on. That's true. Drop a comment in the in the comment section. If you what are you willing to do? Yeah. What are you willing to do to make it? I was going to say if you rate the ball head, but you can comment that too. Wait, forget your ball head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to talk about how much money we spent to leave Peru? Yes. So, Jordy's... I... Before going to Peru, I booked a round trip, but that's because I knew where I was going and where I was going to be next. Jody came to Peru last minute, so he didn't foresee or plan forward. He didn't really know his schedule. So I had the luxury of making a round trip, but Jody, on the other hand, had to book a last minute flight out after his last match. And how much did it hit the pockets for? I think, I think that flight was like $1,400. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a serious $1, ticket. Fourteen hundred dollars. That's yeah. a serious ticket. Because I could, I could have paid eight hundred dollars, but then it would have been like, I'd I keep up Lima, Lima, Bogota, Bogota, Miami, mm -hmm. and the trip was like I would leave Saturday night and get back like Sunday afternoon or something. This wasn't worth it. The extra yeah, no like sleeping. I, I just wanted to get back sooner and. We have played so many weeks on the road that I just want to. I know I'm only going to be home for one week before I go to France, so I want to enjoy it. And yeah, I'll be exhausted. Yeah, exactly. So, which it worked because I slept in Sunday. I flew overnight, got in Sunday, and then I rested Sunday, and I was in training by Monday. Yeah. And if I traveled all this Sunday, maybe I would have been exhausted and maybe training two weeks. Skip it. Yeah. So, scenario, I'd like you to answer. Let's say for the upcoming trip, you have a three. Let's say you have a three week trip somewhere far. Let's say Asia. You can book a one way for eleven hundred, right? And then at the end of the trip, you can decide whenever you're leaving and book another, another ticket back and risk it being eleven hundred again. Or you can book a non refundable, non changeable seventeen hundred dollar round trip. What would you do? And let's say you book the round trip to return on Let's say the Monday after Monday the tournament. After the so even if you lose first round on Tuesday, you got five, six days there, and you just got to suck it up. Pause. That's rough because, like, <laughs> like how Excuse is my it? language. Like, for you in Peru, <laughs> you depends where you're going as well. Yeah, but Peru is still far. You but let's just, let's just say that the, the trip is you're going there for three or four weeks, and you're coming right back home. But I'm saying, like, from your perspective, how did it feel to be... I mean, for you, it's a little bit different because you could still be relatively relatively productive with, like, some content creation stuff. Like, you filmed some episodes, with, like, some like videos with Amy and stuff, but I wouldn't... On the way? Say, yeah, on the way. <laughs> but I, I don't think that the training was the best, you know? Like, from a training perspective, you probably wasted maybe two, three days. But well, uh, also, I I stayed for doubles, and yeah. I maybe I stayed two days. Yeah. But That's I was... Um, so like, how I tried feel? to get out. I tried... I could change my flight, and it wasn't, let's say, a change fee. Just the difference in price on the last minute from where I was... Well, from where I was, it would have been... Let's say I finished playing on Thursday. If I wanted to leave on Friday, I would have to pay a difference of 600. If I wanted to leave on Saturday, a difference of 500. So I just waited the two days and I left on Sunday. So I didn't, I didn't have a, the biggest issue with that. But the scenario is, what would, you, what would you do? Like if you have to look forward, <laughs> and you go into the next trip, you can pay a thousand, eleven hundred dollars one way, and then risk it being that expensive on the way back, or would you just book, would you, or would you just save potentially? I Six hundred bucks and just book the it's, round trip. Depends how big the price difference is because you got you got to pay for hotel as well once you're there. If you stay extra, so that'll maybe might not even out, but get it closer. Let's say hotel is cheap. We're just isolating the flights here. I think I'm just doing it one way. So one way. So because it's just nice, just get out. I'll go one way. You? I I've never booked really round trip term. Yeah. So, but yeah. I, I, don't, I never book round trip, like, non-changeable flight, but I've booked round trip, and I can change the date, but not that before. 
basically because you usually save save money. I think in this case though, if I was locked into a date, I probably would book the one way. And then by God me doing well and the money not mattering as much on the way back. Oh nice, you just put more pressure on yourself than you need to be <laughs> on Sunday. That's great. You gotta believe. That's great. You gotta believe. Hey guys, quick break. Justin here from the changeover. I'm gonna talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver. And you can save even more when you use our code changeover to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. Are we going to talk about Yannick Senna? What happened with Yannick Senna? Oh, what happened? So, uh, <laughs> if you live under a rock like Justin here, some uh, developments about Yannick Senna. I mean, th- by the time this episode comes out, it's well into US Open. Jobs. <laughs> this happened before US Open, but he had this little hiccup with his drug testing. Hiccup? Yeah, hiccup. <laughs> okay. Um, the story is that we talked about this on Instagram Live, but the story for Yannick Senna, for you, those of you who don't know, I'm sure you know already, his physio had a cut on his finger, sprayed his finger with a spray that apparently has a bad substance. He then massaged Yannick Senna and then contaminated Senna and then he tested positive twice in two weeks um, around India was in Miami was the time frame about these tests. Cap or no cap? And then it only now came out Brother, the thing is, I really don't want to believe he cheated. So, like, I would say that is no cap. That, that, that's that's what happened, and I, it, and I it happened wish, all week I long. So he wish. tested, he tested positive two weeks in a row. Huh? All week long? So oh, yeah. So just with this guy, would take putting the stuff on him himself. Oh, it just didn't get out of the system right away. I don't know. I don't know. I just wish that the story wasn't so freaking unbelievable. Do you think all the top guys are playing for clean one hundred percent? I know for a fact all these guys get tested. Well, I, so I shouldn't like, say a fact. I know through hearsay that like a well, lot of guys well, who hearsay. don't have ADHD are playing on other road. I know that through hearsay. I, I haven't seen anyone take any other road, but I've heard about a lot of guys who recently started what doing. What you doing right now is being extremely politically correct. <laughs> who recently, who recently started doing a lot better. <laughs> a lot of guys who I've heard about who started doing a lot better recently, who are in the top hundred in the world, top one fifty. I've heard. That this job happened shortly after <coughs> starting to pop some Adderall. My question: Do you think some of the players would you take Adderall if you guarantee? <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> do you think? Do you think that some of the players in the top hundred, top one fifty, let's say, um, they're less less likely to cast judgment on Sinem because they know that they're taking Adderall, they don't need to take Adderall. Or do you think that they just justify that Adderall is not legal? Wow, that's a good question. I mean, technically, Adderall is legal if you can get the, if you can just fail to whatever the exemption for it. That's yeah. like people saying, "Oh, weed is legal. Let me get my fucking uh, weed card back in the day." You know, if you get medical marijuana card. Except back in, the day. in this case, millions of dollars, millions of dollars <laughs> and points are at on stake at the online for people for themselves, I, other people. The I, integrity of the game. Ben <laughs> made a good point, and he said it? that if Sinner is in fact innocent, then why did they take away his points and money? Oh yeah, that's true. Was that for like that did they well. take his points and money for like? negligence because then they keep saying it's not negligence so I, how think, is it? I think i think they did it makes they did it and accidentally makes you take steroids but he wasn't negligent, negligent based on the thing who wasn't negligent his team was negligent he sprayed uh like a a spray with steroids into his skin bro. worse than how that worse than that <laughs> this man <laughs> in his skin you know my story but anyway uh worse than that this apparently the same physio or trainer, whatever, was a part of some basketball team in um, in Italy, and a basketball player got banned for a year because of the same reason. He used this cream that he shouldn't have used, and the player got why? Banned. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. look is at this, me. Is this why hearsay is, or is Jody, this look here. Why is this cream even in his bag or spray in his bag? Like why is he? If you know a girl, right, right, <laughs> follow me now, right. <laughs> you know a girl. And you know her situation before. 
right? And you tell me, yo, this girl used to be with this man and she cheated on him, right? And then I start talking to this girl, right? And then I get with her and she cheated on me. You would put some blame on me. That's negligence, bro. That's negligence. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to negligence say, bro. Activities negligence. Negligence. All right, simple. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't understand I just also was... how it happened back in March and they took his prize money stuff away and whatever. And we don't hear about it until... To me, that's the, that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is, like, I've been saying this from the beginning, is the consistency, like, the fairness for everybody. Because they're really? saying that... Okay, if, if I put myself in Yannick Sinner's shoes, right, and my massage therapist rubs steroids into my skin, <laughs> right, <laughs> against my knowledge, yeah, I would probably do the same thing Sinner did. I would probably get my lawyers to try and file an appeal. I didn't know it was a mistake. It And also... Probably it's like one billionth of a gram or some crazy little small percentage that the doctors concluded that is no actual performance enhancing ability with the amount of substances in his skin or whatever. But like, if I was sitting, I would do the same thing that he did after the after he found out that he was, you know, tested positive. But that's not the issue. The issue is that other people don't have the ability to do a senate. They don't have yeah. money to afford lawyers and. I've never they heard of anybody getting this solved in two days like how we did it. Yeah, so so, so that's the issue. Because like, and maybe maybe the point is, is that if this actually happened, if it was a mistake, and it's one billionth of a gram or whatever percentage that is in that he get tested positive, and they say that it's not performance enhancing, then maybe that doesn't need to be illegal. You know, maybe he shouldn't be tested positive for that. Like maybe it's not, you know, and maybe that's the rule change. There are issues all around. So probably the, Let's say the governing bodies, maybe they should change the threshold for what is yeah. considered a failed test. Or or just make make the like the punishment consistent and the process consistent. The process of how it's get handled the same because like the ability for someone to test positive and get and, their side heard. Yeah, because apparently yeah. it has to do with like if you if you can prove like apparently he was very he was ready right away to prove, <laughs> oh I know where it came from. It came from Which is crazy. This moment. Which makes it even less and believable. Apparently other people, like let's say I'm I know nothing about this. I had fucking steak one night at dinner in South America, and then I get tested next week and I'm positive. Maybe knowing what I know now, I would know, okay, maybe it was a steak. But like a year ago, two years ago, maybe people don't know. Like they now they don't know what to do. And they, you know, they don't, they can't identify how would I possibly have taken steroids, you know? I just understand how how they were so understanding of his situation. Oh, you don't understand? Like, they understood it right away. It's and they were like, they know oh, it's okay. matches all year long. He's winning every single match. They need him, like, to be on the TV screen. Yeah, Louis yes. Vuitton and all this. Well, what was the reason that it came out at the time it came out? Or they just, they thought it was the time to release it? Like, why did it come out Yeah, I guess at this specific moment? Yeah, good point. I don't know. Like, if they had a decision all this time, and they thought that he was innocent all this time, why didn't we find out? Yeah. Why did we find I out? Find it so four funny. months, five months later. I, I find it so funny that literal day before, he shook Francis's hand in the fires of Cincinnati, and Francis said, "Man, I'm so tired. Like I'm not used to playing as many matches as you guys. You know." Guess who's, guess who's not tired? You need some. You need some cluster ball, my brother. You can <laughs> massage from center therapist. Do you, Do you buy it? Because I I would say that like as crazy as the story sounds, I'm naive, so I I think I buy it. I think I buy it. That like. Did that happen? I don't. Like, I don't see how it happened that way. And it, I guess, I don't know. The guy had this cut and you have a, you have an open wound, right? <laughs> you as a man have an open wound and you're with to massage people. You will just be massaging with your open wound. I wish I wasn't naive because... Apparently on the spray there's a big sign. I saw it that says dope. And like you know what I'm saying? And you <laughs> and you are the physio of the number one tennis player in the world. And that slips your mind and it slipped your mind a few years ago too with the basketball team. Like I wish I wasn't like what are we talking I I don't it's too easy to I, not believe the story and I still believe it. I, I wish I was <laughs> because it's like it's impossible in my mind that he's doing something illegal knowing that he gets tested all the time, unless his team just knew that perfectly that if you stop doing something at a certain time, it's going to get out your system. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that I believe Sinner is doping. I just don't like this story. I think that 
And then they had a story that fit too perfectly with all of the rules and all the stuff so that they could, within three days, have this whole thing just piled. Then it doesn't make any sense to me. So I've heard about players like this Kamil Machaza guy. He was out nine months. Well, it's not the same situation, but similar, where his federation gave him some electrolytes and apparently tested positive and he basically has, has to start over. Like, you don't you don't get to just keep playing the whole time. Like, yeah. most people, when... This is what, um, on Twitter, yeah. this guy, he's a journalist, Jose Morgado. He tweeted at um, Beat of US Open. He Alexander refuses that he got treated differently from other players. And it says, another good <laughs> interview from the world number one at ESPN. And then Liam Brody responded and said, not treated differently from other players, but gets curated presidential sit-down interviews with ESPN to maintain image. Where's this energy for everybody else? Never seen anything like this. Yo, Darren Cahill made made everybody feel sorry for Yannick. The way he sat down and spoke. Like, he's so likable. He's and, elite. And the way he did it, I started questioning my own beliefs. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I had to talk to some negative people again before I could get my... <laughs> <laughs> maybe get, maybe cholesterol is legal. Yeah. <laughs> what I didn't like, what I really didn't like, was they asked him like sort of a softball question about the doping. He answered it, and then the in, and then like the press conference people interjected and said that'll be the last question about this topic. If you mean or to Senna, like during his press conference, they the guy asked him like a surface level question about it, like how are you gonna balance this this stuff. Senna gives his answer. And then the guy steps in and says, that's the last question on that topic. And they talk about... So no one else can ask him. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. Like, the whole world is spinning about this thing. We all talking about it. You have Andy Ruddick's podcast live. He was open talking about it. You have Twitter going crazy. And he's only allowed to be asked one question. And the question was, how are you going to balance... Is he obligated this? to be in the press? Like, contractually, are you obligated to go to the press and talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that level, you were. Like, remember, like, Osaka didn't do, do interviews and stuff? I think she had to pay. I think yeah, she had fine. fine. You should do Marshall Lynch. I was here, so I don't give fine. I was here, so I don't give fine. <laughs> like, I thought that was... I thought that was that was poor. Like, if... You're going to go through this and say that you didn't get any, any unfair treat... You didn't get any, like, preferential treatment and everything's above board, let the people ask their questions and you answer the questions. Like it's the people are arguing that part of the reason why his arm got done so quickly is because you have like this period of um that you can what is appeal. it called appeal that uh, you can appeal yeah and he knew exactly his stuff and he had his team prepare the documents or whatever the case whatever is he had it prepared right away and he can identify this is bro what if you accidentally people. dope how do you know exactly what happened the day that it happened if it was an accident. Everybody would be like scratching their head. But, like, but I was saying that to say that I think their argument is that one of their arguments is that for the people who don't get their cases <laughs> resolved right away is because they can't prove it and they have to find time while being guilty to prove to the people that they're not guilty because they don't know where they can identify the contamination from. Right. Like if I ate steak like two years ago, I would never have known that uh, I'm testing positive because of my fucking tenderloin last week and how do they let you offer that do they go and test the meat at the restaurant i don't know but i was in but columbia two weeks ago like you just tell them where you've been where you ate at and then... oh and two weeks in columbia two weeks ago people were taking pictures of their meat every night at dinner oh. well, sorry they have food <laughs> i've never done Bro, that at dinner. i heard something <laughs> <laughs> i heard something today of, about this girl tara moore who's been suspended yeah, yeah. for two years yeah. and apparently the Lawyer for the ITIA who represented the ITIA against her was one of the lawyers on Yannick Sinner's side in his case, which is weird. I don't know if that's... And then people were arguing on Twitter and they were saying to her, um, what's the issue here? <laughs> <laughs> what's the issue here? Where's the conflict of interest? I, are you all serious? That's ridiculous, bro. That's cr- I didn't see that. That's crazy. She's ar- she's arguing both sides of this, of this <laughs> yeah. drugs thing. Like, you know what uh, Beggy said today? He mm-hmm. said, what's a more pressing issue than this is... Uh, we don't price. make no money. Yeah, the prize money. I want to read this. I had took a screenshot of this. Prize money at which oh, level? I saw that as well. At all levels. Okay. So according to Joe Pompliano, the honey deuce at the US Open, that's the drink that they have, is the best cocktail in sports and the sales back it up. In 2023 at the US Open, 
they sold 450,000 honey deuces at $22 each. That's $9.9 million that they made, um, you know, from, from these drinks. And then John Worthine. Mm-hmm, that's Rudd- Ruddock Spotlight and Grant. Yeah, tweeted, put it another way, honey deuce sales alone will cover the prize money paid to the men's and women's U.S. Open champions. And you wonder why players seek more revenue. Bro, I saw people coming into the stands late last night versus with the uh, Kova and Francis. Mm-hmm. Like two or three guys, both of all the they were fisting the, the honey do drink. Yeah. It was ready to go. And I think apparently the there's more people already, like attendance is higher already this year than, than that was the years before. Year, yeah. So apparently they had crazy attendance at the at the qualities matches too. Apparently which is crazy. madness because can I can you explain to me why the qualities of a tournament is not advertised as a tournament. No, because I was in Jalapa watching maybe 10 UTRs play first round qualities in a 25K. I guess maybe they're local, but they had 30 people there at the yeah. center court. And I was like, tennis, tennis can be marketed different. Yeah. Uh, there's two things. It's like tennis can mar- be marketed different because I... How do I say it? Why wouldn't they just, instead of saying that it's like a main draw on the qualities, it's all one event and like, it just starts they, at this, like name yeah. it different, like name it like preliminary rounds or something, mm-hmm. you know, but it's still the US Open. If I, if I make US Open qualities, I'm I, not going to I say, I play US Open. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to go and play this tournament before US Open. No, I oh, it's US, at the US Open like, I'm going to go and try and qualify for US Open. You're like, oh, I'm playing in the US, US Open. Open. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I understand the te- like it's te- a technical thing, but like, fuck. I mean, these are very good tennis players. And I added... But we watched the highlights on YouTube, Cressy and Choinsky, the craziest tiebreak. Yeah. And it was just as, if not more entertaining than the main round matches because... If you put it in these terms, those players are more desperate than the top 100 players. Like, they aren't guaranteed this $100,000 check. So, it, they're playing for more. Even though it's less money and less Shout points. Mitchell Kruger, by the way. Yeah, they're playing for more. The stakes are even higher for the people in their qualities. Like, I think that that's a storyline that can be pushed in a different way. Instead of, oh, they're the qualities guys and it's whatever. It's yeah, like, exactly. these are the hungriest tennis players in the world. Facts. And watch, watch them really. kill each other. I play these tempo tie breaks for, but you know, and the for are, life-changing money. It's and the matches are a joke. Though. The energy of those matches are a joke because people know that. Like yeah. people, people in the stands know like how much it means to these people, yeah. and like the energy in the crowds are huge. So I don't understand why we have to paint this narrative in tennis that like anyone outside of the top hundred. And I understand like for a lot of tennis players, like your oh, top hundred is the goal, and playing the slams is the goal, which it, I guess it should be, you know, but. You don't have to paint a narrative that if you don't get top 100, if you're in the qualities of the slam, these people are well worth watching because like for, for the people who watch this podcast, and I don't know if like we get maybe 500 to 1,000, maybe just over 1,000 views every episode. So if you make it to this part of the episode, comment subscribe. down below. <laughs> yeah, subscribe. <laughs> but comment down below because like my opinion is there's so many YouTube tennis channels. Like you have like Simon, Carew, you have the Gladiators Tennis, you have Tennis Brothers, Winston Do, Winston Do, you have like this Carew. Like, there's like yeah. fifteen, maybe fifteen that we can just rattle off here of different like tennis Life accounts. On tour. Yeah, and and not all of these people are top hundred, if any. You know what I mean? Like None. Alboran None. has one now. He just started, and his views like, are, are small. But the point I'm making is how successful are these YouTubers in painting their stories and their narratives of their career and people, people tune buy in and watch. So if you can do that to people who are ranked a thousand, like between five hundred or maybe Kuru is like what three hundred. Or some guys aren't right their singles, and they have huge channels. And I get it, like part of it is art and content creation, but at the end of it is tennis. And like if people are buying into tennis on YouTube, one hundred percent they can buy into the storylines of like Arthur Rindnikesh versus Chris Eubanks, uh, Eubanks, Eubanks first round or like Joinsky you know versus I mean? Cressy final round Spaziri like these six stories you know what I mean like yeah I just think that we need to change it's a wasted opportunity to yeah. like for everybody for everyone everybody above for everybody because then maybe if they market it better they get more turnout more sales because the reality is too, tennis is actually very deep nowadays like I don't, I don't think 20 years ago, guys who were like good challenger players were going to be 
doing damage in slams. But over the last few years, like challenger players have started to like really like break through and quite a few of them like like when when did you hear about Mariano Navone? Third baller from Argentina, he's 37 in the world. Mo made most of his 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 way on a challenger tour and this guy is well inside the top 50 now. So I just feel like there's not enough credit for the level of tennis that goes down that you don't see. I just think that. I don't even think it's like a like I I agree with you about credit, but I don't think that's the issue because these people are not looking. Like I think there's someone who is 200 in the world is not. They're not pitying themselves and saying, "Oh, people don't think I'm a great tennis player." That's not what's happening. It's like these people deserve more. It's hard. It's hard to get the, to make more. It's hard to get the casuals to buy in. Like you have to get like real like people who are really into tennis, or you have to like make the story so enticing that. That it like matters, you know. I think a lot of the tennis players as well are like, oh, if you're not top hundred, you're kind of not yeah, anyone. You're not doing anything. Yeah. But is that is that because like they're thinking of it in a sense of they're trying to give themselves an edge, you know? Yeah. Like for example, you've heard stories about Mikkelsen that we'll get to in a second, but like I've overheard Mikkelsen at tournaments and he, his self-confidence is like he won't accept losing to this player today. So he talks himself up and talks them down, mm -hmm. you know? They think, is that because is that what guys do to have a mental edge to win on the day? Or do you it's not only just a mental edge, it's just, I guess, the way the society views tennis players and then you just buy into it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like, That's what I think it is. And then it's just changed from the top, like, Something as as simple as like what Temba said on on Instagram about the U.S. Open not advertising the qualies as the tournament. It's like mm -hmm. how, how how is that possible? Yeah, for sure. And they can make more, more money too, just by like I said, bro. These are their level is super high, and they're hungrier than the guys who are actually in the tournament. And what's also sick about that is that there's so many matches. At the same time, there's so many players practicing because all the main draw players are going to be there practicing. So it's like from qualies until like middle of week one of main draw is probably the most matches and the most yeah. options you can go to. Yeah. You know, it's like the most versatility. Like the the place is going to be packed, you know? Yeah, like people think like you go to a slam, you need to buy tickets for Arthur Ashe Stadium and you need to watch matches in the stadium. But me as a tennis lover, like when I was a kid, or even now, if I would go to a slam, I want to go first round, second round, third round, fourth round, where the grounds are full, and I can just pop into different yeah. courts and see. Yeah, because the problem is yeah. if you get if you're restricted to only the night match on stadium court, you don't know if Alcaraz is just gonna murder someone one to one one. And you're gonna see two, three matches that day, as opposed to you could see ten, fifteen, whatever, yeah. and you can see really good matches. And okay, maybe it's good to have access to the center court if you do want to end up seeing Alcaraz, but. There's so much good tennis out there. And yeah, I just think that we have to do a better job of, let's say, putting the stories around it. Because people people watch stuff for the story at yeah. the end of the day. When you watch football, you were diehard Manchester United fan, or you watch basketball, UFC, whatever, it's storylines. And we just don't build it up enough besides the the greats. I, mean, I think we do on this podcast our part, but we're obviously... I mean, tennis as a, as a whole. Yeah, but I'm uh, saying that we are a very small part of the tennis ecosystem. Yeah. Like, literally... Fucking smallest part. <laughs> Subscribe to the show, man. <laughs> See the man begging? <laughs> but, but I think it has to come from the top down. Like, you can take some of this $9 million from the, the honey deuces or whatever and throw some money to advertising for the, for the qualities or something. Throw that into the marketing budget for these guys and make them do some community. And maybe if they come in, there have some or like, community <coughs> stuff at the beginning of the weekend. Come on. There's so many options. Instead of who's this guy, Cressy? The guy used to be top 40, top 30. I don't know how he was. 30, something like that. Label it a comeback story or whatever. And you, you try to follow Cressy through the draw. I don't know what, but there's ways to make these stories more yeah. more enticing. And the thing is, with the guys playing qualities of slams, those guys are the guys playing challengers. So the mm -hmm. tennis at Challengers is very good too. It's not like it's this huge gap and there's like nothing in between. Exactly. Like people from ranked 100 to two, whatever the cutoff is, 230, 240, they're all playing 250 qualies or they're playing Challengers. Challengers. Or even higher, like the 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 Challenger, what is it, Phoenix, 
Like, how many top 100 guys play Phoenix? Yeah. You know, like, especially the big challenges now, a lot of the top 100 guys play. I'm actually kind of scared about, not scared, because I don't, hopefully I'm not in futures next year, but, like, the prize money in the futures are going to go up from, <laughs> from, what is it? 15 and 25 to, to 20 and 30. 30. So now there's more money in the futures. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't a challenger guy who's not doing very well or something? Maybe they're not, maybe they're a little bit scared that they, they don't have a full week of performance. Why wouldn't they just come down and play the futures? Now there's more money in futures and they took away points from the challengers. So there's less points in challenges and an increase in money from futures. Why wouldn't the futures just get stronger next year? I, what I think about is, will there be less futures? Because they cost more money to host. To host, yeah. Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z, boy. But also, like, I don't know if you can really complain about that because we're asking for more money. They add more money. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just scared about like, if if they can make an adjustment at the challenges also. Yeah, yeah. By like, I don't even. Yeah, I, I don't know how they would do that because I, I think it's a good step, but I'm just scared that guys play down. Um, I guess if guys play down, well, this will have more opportunities yeah, to play up. <laughs> maybe the guys will have a chance to sneak in, take some risks, yeah. sneak into some challenges. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'm off for that one, but who knows? Um, yeah, can we talk about Mickelson for example for a quick second? Because I haven't played seen, last week. Have you seen the video with Mickelson? I'm guessing you. Have. I've heard about. I haven't seen the video so oh. I was seeing stuff about. He went down. I guess maybe like a double break to Senegal in the finals of Winston Salem, and the man. Tore the ball as hard as he can, straight like, straight to the front row. Like he's at the net. I don't know if he meant to hit it in the net or meant to hit it at the back, but he sliced it a little bit too much, and the ball went it like rose, <laughs> bro, a million miles now into the front row. So obviously he didn't mean to aim for the person in the front row. I don't think he actually hit the person. I think it might have missed by like, like really close. But you're telling me that he can hit that ball as hard as he can into the front row by mistake, but he did it. And he doesn't even get to a warning. But Djokovic tapped the ball in the US Open, hit the person in the throat, but very soft tap compared to what Mickelson just did. But I'm telling you, the, the refs, as well. the refs <laughs> need to be put Yo. on a strike policy or a money thing, bro. Because that's incredible that he can do such a dangerous action. To a fan. A fan. Yo, to and me. That was potentially that was potentially actually harm somebody, that was and then Chapo correct. curses at somebody, oh, sorry. or whatever he did. No, no, that, you're talking about that one. Yeah, he cursed at somebody the other week and got, and got defaulted. Oh, but, I saw that. No, as but well. there's another time where but he actually hit somebody. Say, but what I was yeah. saying is, to me, there's no different than the Chapo of of one that hit referee in the eye to Mickelson's arm. The only difference is that unlucky for Chapo that it hit him, and lucky for Mickelson that it missed the person in the front row because one inch to the side, and that lady's getting it in the eye, and he's gone home. So you're telling me that it's the outcome of where the ball lands? Like, same Nothing. thing with Kyrgios, Kyrgios and Sissipas in Wimbledon. When Kyrgios, like... Sissipas with the ball to the... To the yeah, side. Kyrgios is getting under his skin, and he, like, Sissipas, like, freaked out, hit the ball, sliced it into the wall, like, to the side. But, like, all of those are way worse than Djokovic, like, flicking the ball back and hitting the person. I'm pretty sure Djokovic held that game, didn't Bro, he? Bro, we like, sat... We sat courtside last week in Arequipa. And a player threw his racket from <laughs> the doubles line. If you don't know tennis, it's the furthest line, right? To the side. To the side. To the opposite side fence. Clean. Into the scoreboard. Clean into the scoreboard. It flew 40 feet hard. Boom! <laughs> no warning. No warning. No warning. Nothing. Like, I just feel like... There's no accountability for us. And it's not fair. It's not fair. Here's my question with that. How many people do you think is lying enough to take that referee's job? The one we're right here? In in Eric Eric <laughs> Zero? Yeah, so like... like, What are they going to do? They ban him. He gets in trouble. <laughs> and now he has to go down the level. Who's taking his place? You know? I mean, there's somebody. There are some the people. The referee but... job is so thankless. And like, not many people want to actually... But do the referees. job. <laughs> do it. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't get more clear cut than a 40 foot, not even a toss. He threw it. I'm surprised he didn't break the scoreboard. Yeah, it was loud. It was loud. 
Hey, shout out, by the way, to Matthias Soto, the man is balling, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to call him my name on that, but it's okay. <laughs> so, the man is balling, by the way. He can't lose, uh, and I know. Yeah, but I, I think Mickelson should have received a code and a fine. Like, at least. If not default, code and a fine. Sounds because good. that's dangerous, what he did. What, what's, uh, what's worse? Physical harm or mental harm? The Shapovalov love cursing at the ground. <laughs> I think physical is worse. <laughs> yeah, what I teach you as a kid, sticks and stones can break my bones. Because the there's no way Shapo screaming to the crowd and the crowd wasn't like giving him something. He didn't. Yeah, yeah. He didn't pick out thing. somebody in the crowd and start cursing at them. That's someone that's took a racket and hit it at Mickelson first. <laughs> yeah, that's not what happened. Like Mickelson had nothing. They not had nothing to do with it. The people there, he just hit a ball. But can I'm I sure that somebody was chirping. Can I just, can I just also put a disclaimer out there? That I'm not here talking on my high horse. Like I've never hit balls out. You like, know what? Oh, I gotta address God. something too. <laughs> Last week we were talking to Ben Lock, and this man talking about oh. Refereeing is a thankless job, and I said that again just now, right? I've seen this man. No, no, I've, de- I've seen this man berate a ref after the match was done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro, when? in Trinidad. <coughs> the lady. Do you know what happened? Because let's tell your version of the story, and I can tell. Mine. I don't remember what happened. I'm just saying that you're about you to be wrong. Why? You're like you're like painting a false narrative of what actually happened. What happened? Before I say the story, let me agree with you in saying that I've had my moments where I have, like, that's all unleashed a referee. That's all I want. But, but this moment that you're talking about was actually not fair because when I went to her was like, it was more I was trying to show her like you were being condescending. Her. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> show I wasn't. her where she was wrong. I wasn't because right. I, if I talk if me through mistaken, it. Talk me through. I was playing doubles against Zeke and Oscar. Okay. I think there was a call where, like. I don't exactly remember how the call went, but they ended up giving us the call. Oscar Zeke ended up giving us the call and she was like not accepting it or something. Like she was like firm and she was like so sure. And I was trying to like tell her like, if the whole court is in agreement, like you don't have to be so positive about it. Like you can, you can also like, you know, don't be so do sure. Yeah. yeah, Don't be so sure all the time and you can wait and like, just be like, I think if, if they make a mistake in a minute, they like to stand on their ground, you know? So I'll try to explain to her, but she was, she's right, you know? Which is frustrating. 100%. So, and I wasn't disrespectful and I was not condescending. It was Remember more, when we, you, we were in uh, San Diego, last round qualies, you were getting cheated? Yeah. And the mouse was outside of the court and he didn't come on the court? Yes. Were you nice to him? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that I, I would have liked you to also be a little more stern with that. Like, you, you're you very like, oh, it's a, but they also, they mess stuff up. Yeah. Like, but, there, there needs to I be a, a line. Me, it, bo- it bothers me differently than it bothers you. Because if someone comes and they said, maybe I missed that one, I'm sorry, it doesn't bother me as much as that bothers you. That pisses you off. Like, I'm sorry if it if after the match I look at the video. Don't tell me I sorry, miss- brother. See, that pisses you off. But for me, it's like he's a human. But if I'm in the moment, and I'm being cheated out of a match in the qualities of a 15. Stand on the court. <laughs> and the man is over there. It's like, get on the court and watch this man. He's cheating me out of the match. Like, watch it. After I, because then it pisses me off because I come off the court and there's a handful of people. Sorry, man. You got, <laughs> I saw it. that was, how was it any different? Bro, because the referee in that moment is not doing his job versus like a referee who trying his best. He's not trying his best. The referee's on the court. The referee's on the court looking, watching Justin's forehand. Oh shit, that was so fast. And, I can't and, see. and then and then he you know? made and then he <laughs> made up a mark, bro. He made yeah. he, he made a circle. He went to where the ball was and then looped back to the service inside the service box. I guess I guess the way I see it is I miss a lot of tennis balls on the court. And referees also m- miss calls. But like so if they come to me and say they're sorry about the missed call, no, no. they're human. If, but- if he hit me with in the moment, honestly I'm not sure. It's like, okay. I don't think so. I think no, no, no. No, I'll be upset, <laughs> but I can respect that you're being honest with me. No, because but I don't argue if you're not sure we're going to have to replay the point or something. No, no, no. If he says he didn't see it or it's the linesman caught, whatever, fine. <laughs> but don't talk to me like I'm crazy and then we watch the video back and you're wrong. And all you have for me is, sorry. <laughs> is that how he did it? Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I messed up. Good luck in group the four. 
The worst is when they talk to you like you're tripping out. Yeah, like, that's the way I do it. You like. know, you know for sure the ball is whatever it is, and they're saying. talking to you like there is yeah. no chance in any planet that that was what you thought it was. Then you go like, to the replay, right. and that's you're right. Telling, no, that's what I was telling you right. now. Like you don't Fuck have you too, to be then. so sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that one. I don't understand that one. So I'm selective, and I will say that I do not do that anymore. When's the last time you seen me do that? I don't know, but I'm I'm a, I'm gonna see some. No, 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 no. That's behind me. That's that's behind me. When was your last racket break? Not since I switched to Wilson. Shout out Wilson for for hooking my boy up. He's excited. I'm very excited. I'm rocking the new shoes, new bag. W my rackets again. It feels nice. I'm home. You know. <laughs> you feel like a player. Yeah, I feel like a player. I can go on the the website, get some stuff for cheap. Some cheap, yeah. So that's good. So shout out to Wilson. Thank you. Who we got? Uh, over under? Yes. Overrated or underrated, Evan? Sightseeing on the road. In the moment, overrated, after underrated. I, I feel like when I'm there, I'm like, oh, like, let's chill. Let's like not do anything. I'm like down to just stay in, whatever. Let's get some food. Yeah, get yeah. some food, go back to the hotel, whatever. And then after the week, you're like, oh, I was there, but like, I didn't, people ask you like, oh, what'd you do there? You're like, nothing. <laughs> I didn't see anything. But I will say sometimes for me, it's like everywhere you go, it's whatever. Like sometimes sightseeing, like seeing monuments, sure, it's yeah. like, if you see seen monuments in Paris, other wherever, like what's another cathedral going to do for you? Sometimes. How I many feel, fucking cathedrals have you visited, bro? We're not talking about cathedrals. Like sightseeing. Bro, I was just giving an example. I hate like, when you do this, though. So many you know for a fact <laughs> I'm just giving an example. And then you act like I'm, I'm trying to bro, make some on. crazy point. Come on, though. Like if, okay, for example, we go yeah. to... I go No, no. For example, we go to Cancun. You can go and see Chichen Itza. Sick. That's a fun activity. You can go to Cenotes. Fun activity. All right. If you go... If you How go many to, blue holes I got to see? Before I see a blue I've hole. I've never seen a blue hole. I have never been to one. But not okay. all of the places that you go to, you have blue holes, bro. Like, I went to Egypt and I saw, I went quadding in the desert. Sick. No, there are uni unique experiences. I will say that. Like, if I'm in Egypt, I'm going to the pyramids. I'm going to try to. Mm -hmm. Because that's like, that's an experience. Wow. You want a camel? But some you want a camel? I might. I might watch somebody. I try to low-key scared. When you get on, you feel like you're going to fall off immediately. Uh -huh. It doesn't look like it. I don't know if I'm doing that. I don't, I, I don't want to lie to the, to the people there. I I may or may not. Probably more not than would. But I want to see the pyramids. I want to do stuff like that. But we had our keeper last week, right? I'm going to be real. The first, second night we're there, we go, we have dinner. Me and Jody want to find some water. We see a parade. We watch a parade. I think that's great. On the way to the parade... <laughs> On the way to the parade, we see two alpacas on the side of the road. We stop. Sick. Oh, that's an alpaca. Sick. <laughs> two pictures. Great. The week after, him, him, Amy, and Dan are like, they want to go to alpaca world to like feed and look at alpacas. Like, I don't care. You know what's crazy? I seen the alpaca. You know what's crazy? <laughs> we got to alpaca world. And we walk into Alpaca World, and they're just there sitting down. Yeah, you know I don't care. Say, Why am I walking to I go look at that, Alpacas? I, I will say that activity wasn't L, but the you idea You sat in front of me at lunch that day yeah, yeah. and said, touch grass, bro. Go do something. Yeah, I agree with that. Bro, I, I don't that. care. I agree with that. I already oh. seen the Alpaca in the street. Okay, okay, but you could have gone and made chocolate, and you could have gone to the Italian Why restaurant. do I want to make chocolate <laughs> when I can buy chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can go and, and the person make the, the pasta in front we went. of you. Oh, you went. We went. Unbelievable. Oh, Incredible pasta last night. That's food, though. That's an experience yeah, that's, that's valuable to me. Yeah. Me looking at some animals sitting there and giving think... them some hay or whatever doesn't make my day. <laughs> I don't care. I think that's just you not being fond of animals. But the other activities, like... Don't paint me in that, but I, I'm, not, I'm not against animals. Did I say that? Did I say that? No, no, no. But you... It could be misconstrued as the uh, Justin hates animals. Oh, no, Justin said... hates these animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that I think there are places. The road is underrated. It depends where I think. It I think there are places and scenarios in which yes, you should definitely go out of your way. Make sure you go see this, that, and the third. Yeah. But there are other weeks, bro, where if it's the most cool thing I can do, ten minutes from here is looking at a parker, bro. I don't care. 
But that was just an option of other things. Like, What's like, other options? Make chocolate. That's not a cool option. <laughs> you can't just say, yo, I was making chocolate. and. All right, next open on it because he's pissing me off. This oh, is oh, you asked me. I don't care I about saying. making it's chocolate, bro. It's underrated? It's underrated, yeah, yeah. And how much stuff do you do on the road? No, no I would say that I, like, of recent, I've made an effort to do more things mm-hmm. on the road. Yeah, because, me as well, yeah. Because I think, like, it's not like before in the old days where we would play, if we play 25 tournaments, 12 of them is in Cancun, and we're at the same place every week or something. It's like now I'm playing tournaments where I'm in like Colombia one week, Peru one week. I was in Tunisia this year. I'm playing next week in France. Like it's starting to get to where I'm playing tournaments that I haven't played before and places I haven't been before. And I don't want to be at the end of my tennis career mm-hmm. and I'm at home and I'm not traveling anymore. I'm like, oh my God, I was in, you know, I had this cool experience. One time I made chocolate in, Lim- in you know, like, <laughs> That's not school, brother. Today. If you look at back twenty years from now, talk to the kids about chocolate that you made on the arcade, but I feel bad for you. That- <laughs> that's just an example, like you know what I mean. Like, oh, I went quadding in the desert in Egypt. That's cool, you know. That is cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and you understand? I'm a range saying of activities that are going to be more and less. So fun. I'm saying, don't judge me when we're in arcade, and I don't want to see His a freaking alpaca. Just, it's just higher yeah. than yours. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And then there are places where it makes a difference. And I just don't believe that I think you were having a tough go at it after you had food poisoning for a few days. You weren't thinking straight. Oh, Brother, you couldn't Literally. convince me to go look at alpacas on my best day. <laughs> <laughs> we went, we in San Francisco, or no, San Diego. Me, AJ, and Jody, it's like day off. Great day. <clears throat> we, we plan on the podcast, we do all this stuff. Great and day. then we have lunch. Or we, not even lunch yet. We had breakfast, then we did some whatever. And then these guys are like, we should go and do something. Why? And then they, <laughs> come, they, come, up, Diego, they come up with going to the San Diego Zoo, which might be the biggest zoo I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> we walked 16 miles, bro. It's not my fault, not my fault the man hates animals. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, we walked 16 miles for no reason, bro. It seems to be a reoccurring thing. <laughs> <in our heart. laughs> yes, yes. But that's a cool experience. For who? Going to the zoo and seeing like lions Brother, and after, fucking, you know what I mean? Monkeys and For stuff. the first hour, I'll give you, there's awe in seeing some wild animal, right? After an hour, we're just walking. One guy has been there. We went there for like three hours, bro. The zoo is really big. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, after the first hour, you just walk in, bro. Because now you're thirsty, you're tired. And now you don't care about the giraffe. You, you don't guys care. Have done something. I guess it's big there, but like you guys should have done something that's like more specific to like San Diego. Like I guess there's zoos everywhere. I mean, I guess it's a good. Apparently, zoo. apparently it's one of the best zoos in the world. Yeah. The San Diego Zoo. But it's huge. Like like in in Kentucky and Cincinnati, like in that area, there's the aquarium. I think that's sick. Go and see. Frequented the aquarium. I went, I've been to an aquarium time. since I was young, bro. And like, I got to see bro. penguins and stuff. Like, that's cool. And sharks and stingrays and whatever. Like, that's cool to me. Like, maybe I'm a hater, dog. Maybe he hates it. Maybe I'm a hater, bro. Yeah. I just All right. It does always. Next one? Next one. Overrated or underrated? Manchester United Football Club. He's wearing the hat on his head. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. Is Manchester United Football Club over or underrated? We can go all time overall as a club, and then I want you to single it down to the to, to the current squad and current regime. So I think over history, it must be underrated or it's Absolutely appropriately. Emotional. I think it's appropriately rated because I don't even watch football consistently. And when I was young, hearing about Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo, and so it must have been the place to be. But that was back then, though. <laughs> but but talk to me. Talk to me about how you yeah, view the you club. Grew up in Sir Alex Ferguson era. I mm-hmm. mean, dude, that's why we could not lose if we tried. Yeah. So, I like me and my friends, like closer friends. I would say most of us were United fans. It was like United, Chelsea, maybe a few Arsenal fans. City is only a thing of recent. So mm-hmm. like, like Noah, for example, is a City fan. But you won't find many City fans our age because. City only started doing good recently, mm. you know? So I would say underrated. United is underrated. Current squad also underrated. Everyone's panicking it where we won game and won well, game. Everyone, bro, you be panicking, bro. We sitting in the... Nah, I'm not panicking. Not about this season. So the day of Jody's flight, 
is the day after a tough loss and United is playing at 6 a.m. against Brighton, I believe. I think he wakes up early and watches. You watch the match? Absolutely. 6 a.m. He wakes up. <laughs> he wakes up at 6 a.m. I woke up at 6.25. The game started at 6.30. I wake up at like 8.30. I say, United, United win. <laughs> Just suck his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm panicking because we played good. That's like if you played. That's like... That's like you lost in three sets and you hit a ball to go up a break, but the ball popped or something. And you had to replay the point. You had to replay the point and you lost the point and now they held you lost the match. So you, you think United is underrated right now? Underrated, yeah. Where will so. they finish this year? Top four. <laughs> Does anybody in the comments like say City, that they will be top four? City, Arsenal, for sure, too. And then you can say like there are other handful of teams that could be that high, like Villa, Spurs. And us, yeah, we, I would say we're in that little in that mix between I would say between three and seven. So Champions League yeah. next year, Champions League next year. Yeah. All right, comment down below if you think that Jody is just being emotional. Well, I am being emotional, but comment down below if you think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Roddick tweeted: Should players be allowed to catch tosses? Thoughts, comments, concerns. And he added to that that he thinks that so in tennis, if you toss the ball and you have an intent in your swing to hit the ball and you don't make contact that's a it's considered a fault you you miss that serve you have to hit a second serve and as a second serve you lose the point and he's arguing that he thinks that the toss should be part of that swing like it should be considered an attempt to serve well like once at least your hand is part of your serve yeah so like once you make this motion and the ball is out of your hand it should be live like from there it's done and I would I disagree. I disagree too. Because in basketball, if I'm taking a free throw and I do like this and I bring it back down, I don't, I don't not get to take the shot anymore. I think. Well, once the ball leaves your hand. But that's different. But it's a free in a free throw. What happens? Can you pump take a free throw? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you, you can. And then reset and take, and take the free throw. I, I believe you can. Now, I, now I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but I'm imagining that can you can you pump pump. Fake. I think you can, bro. Envy, bro. No. NBA oh. rules prohibit a free throw shooter from intentionally faking a free throw attempt. Pump faking. What if you don't intentionally do it? Free throw is considered a violation. You go up to shoot and you're shot. Like, yeah. not. No, See, what if, this is how and you hit animals. Wait, wait. But what if you start the motion and you get distracted by something and you start again? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's different. I don't know uh, how that works. That's what I'm more mean. To. Like I yeah, don't because what if you're about to what? and like a gust of wind or someone makes a noise or you know, I think it's just too much gray area. And I think that And I caught about three tosses today in my practice set. So I don't know <laughs> if I wanna be But he was saying that he thinks that tossing should be like it's like a skill. Like you just practice your toss so you don't have to keep catching your toss. Nah, like to me, I think I think what he's concerned about is like the gamesmanship because he said it can also be used to stop shot clock and restart. What That's are your thoughts? Sure. Once you get to the yeah, but every single sport is going to have gamesmanship with little like people bending the rules and stuff. I've so never I, seen anybody toss a ball up and catch it to get themselves more time. I've never seen it. Well, we've definitely seen like bouncing the ball on the shoe bounce. or, you know, like... Or just an excessive number of bounces. Yeah, like people people definitely... There's a little bit of gamesmanship. And that's where the referee comes in and says, yo, cut that off. <laughs> but they don't do anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why you have a referee oh. in the chair, bro. Yo, <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Yeah, I don't think because it's like in any sport, it's gonna happen. Like, have you ever seen in football when one team wins a penalty and the other team tries to go and step on the penalty spot? You seen that? Yes. Like in penalty shootouts or something, or like people try and go and step, or they try and intimidate the keeper, or like if you win a free kick, guys, they don't put the ball exactly where the fall. Try to the cheat. Top. It's gonna happen in any sports, like. like I think you just get in very nitpicky with some of the rules. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I think people, I don't think people intentionally often toss and they're like out of breath or something. They try to never say that. Time. Yeah. Because it's also, I, don't, I guess I don't know how tiring tossing is, but like. It's not tiring at all. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Where are you going with what that? Do you mean, I don't I know. Say, Where are you going with that? You're not necessarily recovering. Like if you're just tossing the ball and whatever, you're still performing an activity to toss the ball or whatever, you're not recovering from. If you're out of breath, I'm not going to think, oh, let me just toss a few bad tosses. Yeah, I've like, never seen that word. I've seen like bounce off the shoe or something or someone hits the ball away and they go walk and get it. 
But I think that's what you have a referee for. If you if you can see someone's intentionally delaying game, that's an issue. And if somebody has a very bad toss and they're tossing three, four, five times every few points, then I think that's also sh- maybe there should be a line. I don't know what the line is today, but I don't, I don't think anybody bad toss <laughs> has that issue. I don't, know if, I don't know if anybody has that issue, but I think if you play a match and there's one or two bad tosses and someone catches the toss, I think that there's no issue with that. Yeah. I don't think anyone gives. I agree. I agree. I think he said that there was overwhelming, like, uh, he said, early results are showing that I'm the only one super annoyed by this. So, the people... Super spoke. annoyed. He's got to relax, bro. Yeah. Yo, Andy, Andy chill out, bro. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, dog. Yeah. I think also, like... Also, does it does a factor in this because he's one of the best servers of all time. So. Yeah. <laughs> With a perfect toss. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, like, bouncing back to the center... The center situation. Doping? Yeah. <laughs> I will just say, and this is like like a mini event here. Okay, like, holding I, this one in. No, no, no. <laughs> but it just, with Roddick, when he was talking about it, on there was one of the live shows that he was talking about it, and he was so adamant in defense of Sinner because he was saying, oh, they get tested at every slam and they get tested every t- Something. He said either every slam or every tournament or something. And then someone questioned in the in the comments and said so you're saying that every um every athlete every athlete gets every slam at every slam or something something to that effect yeah. and then he backtracked and he made a blanket statement as if it was fact yeah. that it wasn't fact so that that bothered me a little bit because i think that he has such a big name and such a big voice that he has to be very careful like if he has like forty two thousand subscribers and we have a thousand <laughs> like, i don't understand <laughs> like subscribe to the channel but i i think like if he just needs to be careful because he has such a big voice. And yeah, he has, sure. I would say in tennis podcasting, his probably he he just came and he just took it over. You know, like his is probably the biggest, mm-hmm. the biggest tennis podcast. He has the biggest voice. Yeah. Like in terms of podcasting, I'm sure there are other people that have like their, um, what's it called? Like the desks, like the prime time at US Open. These desks. But as a podcast, he has the biggest tennis podcast. Yeah. Sure. So I just think that if Andy Roddick, if you watch it this podcast <laughs> <laughs> i would just say that yeah you have a big audience and a big voice so make sure that you're not leading people astray if you're defending and don't people don't don't whatever. present opinions as facts or yeah. or things that you assume as yeah. facts which i think which i think he did mention in the when he, he tweeted back and he like which I, I just did with the with the with the free throw yeah, exactly. Like he, he took some accountability. Yeah. Like he either corrected himself or yeah. whatever, but like, which is good, which is, is good. But I would say that a smaller percentage would have seen the correction versus the larger the actual would have seen the correction. Yeah. So, yeah, I would just, um, I'm erotic. <laughs> Here's some constructive criticism for you. Yes. From our small little No, from yeah. your peers. Yeah. Because we're going to be there soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, ever, right? you ever think of like a, a top 100 tennis player and you think like, like, we're going to meet one day. He's going to be coming on his way down, and I'm going to be coming on my way up. I've never done that in my way. life, but that's funny. <laughs> I thought that. So. <laughs> that's funny. I've never had that thought ever. I don't think that's going to have a way Roddick, though. Obviously, his his thing has done very well. So, yeah. hopefully, we meet both at the top. At the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, should we talk? It's been about an hour. So, let's talk a little bit about what's next for us, and then, then we can roll. One more thing about the doping thing. Oh. Do you think the test... Okay. Do you think the testing is good enough? Is advanced enough for potential doping? I couldn't tell you, bro. I'm not a scientist. Um, but I'm sure that... I'm going to say I'm sure. I believe <laughs> that, <laughs> like, like some wiser people than me have said, that usually the athletes and the trainers and whoever who are trying to do that are probably going to be a few steps ahead of the testing because the testing is reactionary to what's going on. So probably it's not. Probably it's going to always be catching up. And then I guess they'll revise who's been taking what and for what purposes. But um, yeah, that's what I think. I think that it's always going to be like a cat and mouse game. Like, like, what do they call that game when you play like criminals and police or something and robbers? Cops and robbers, Cops and robbers that one. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's how, that's how that kind of stuff goes. That the drugs will get better and then the tests will follow suit. What do you think? You asked that question for a reason. Well, I was just wondering what you guys thought about it. <laughs> you don't have any thoughts on it? 
No, I've I've also heard that yeah, there's much more money in the doping illegal doping side mm-hmm. versus the testing side. True. Uh, okay. For um, you say obvious reasons, the robbers have uh, the robbers yeah. have an advantage here. Yeah, more resource. Uh, yeah, but had thought at all has that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So what's the solution? It's a solution. Unless it's just everyone can, everyone can dope. Just let dope. everyone dope. Hey, <laughs> let everyone dope. The thing that I think about doping at the end of the day is great, great. You, you're gonna make cut the video. <laughs> <laughs> you make you make your millions. You achieve things that you achieve. Whatever you gotta, you gotta live with that yourself. But what I would be afraid of is the long term health side effects. Will I need to be hooked on this other road forever, or am I gonna have? Mood swings. Will my whatever work? Will I be What's able? That? Huh? What's that? My left arm. With it? <laughs> with a Benjamin Lux it? Um, you know, like, is it worth? Because you're gonna be hopefully, if you're lucky, a a regular human being longer than you're gonna be an athlete. And is it worth having to be potential, either sick, unwell, or hooked on something for the rest of your life? And I don't know if that's a price I'm willing to pay. Plus, Fox. Well, I think that is a good way to end it. We don't want to keep you guys too long. We have some more topics that we wanted to talk about, but it's obviously going quite long. So we'll talk about it in the next episode. Um, quickly, before we roll, what's next for everyone? Uh, I guess you can start, Justin. I leave tomorrow. Today is Tuesday. I leave Wednesday. What's that? The 20 whatever of okay. August, 28th of August. I'm heading to Serbia. I'm going to be playing in three 15Ks, possibly a 25K at the end of that. And I'm going with my old teammate. Yes, he's been on the show before, Roberto Sid. Go check his episode out. Um, yeah, actually pretty excited for that. Before I got to our keep, I thought I was going to make that trip by myself. Uh, young black man by himself in East Europe. I was like not that excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I wasn't too pumped about it. I don't have any prejudice against it. It just like it didn't sound like it would be the most fun trip. I think it's probably good for my tennis in terms of surface or whatever. Go to go to some zoos. Yeah, like touch some grass. I'm sure it's pretty pretty uh, grassy out there. A lot of trees. Uh, but, but I saw videos of the clay in one of those survey tournaments. Look very nice. I never it's seen anything. I didn't see anything about it. Is it nice? Yeah, I look. I think Moen were played there last year. Okay, it nice. Yeah, yeah. So I look forward to that. I made it through a trip finally in our keeper. First week was rough. I had food poisoning or other two seconds. I'm not sure. But it was, it, that was rough. But I actually played a match. I played Ben Lock, the eventual winner of the tournament. Had chances in the second set. Wow. Played actually a good level, I thought. Played some doubles matches there as well. It was just good to be in like a, let's say a pressure filled environment and kind of feel myself doing my thing again. And yeah, it was fun. I feel like I'm actually playing well. And Rob has always been like a good influence on me. Like from, from the college days, when I was a freshman, he was going into his junior year where he ended like three in the country. So he was someone I always kind of followed and trained and stuff. So I think it's a good, it's a good, it's a good situation for me for the next three, four weeks to have good training of a, a positive, disciplined guy to be around all the time as opposed to traveling with Jody. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I think it's it's it has the potential to be a good trip for me, tennis wise, and yeah, man, it's good to not do it alone, and yeah, looking forward to it. Should be fun. Nice, Evan. You? Uh, game plan? I'm training for the next two, three weeks. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we'll see. Nice. You heard it here first. He's joining <laughs> for the next two, three weeks. And then <laughs> write that see. down. Write that down. <laughs> uh, and then me, I leave on uh, Sunday to. By the way, I'm leaving to Sunday to go to France. I bought my ticket to France the same day as I bought my ticket from Peru, and my France ticket was over a thousand dollars as well. So like, just in one day, just staying. Scenario was really thing. Yeah, but um, I heard you're very prepared for this uh, this travel. What do you mean? You made a you, <laughs> you made a purchase, bro. I bought a neck pillow and an eye uh, the thing that goes in your eyes so you can sleep. You know, I'm one of those. You know what I'm talking you about? Bought you bought one too. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> this man was wearing it. Was it just on? 
No, I, no, I took it out of my pocket. Oh, my oh pocket. what the hell? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I watched the Diary of a CEO episode, uh -huh. episode with the lady who was talking about sleep, and she was talking about like how much she helped the NBA players like to go from like West Coast to East Coast and like all this stuff. And one of her things was like, yeah, that. Like, yeah, window or aisle? I'm a window guy. I get window notice. Preferably. Just so people don't uh, like wake me up to move and stuff. But I mean, it's definitely more crammed. But if I can get comfortable and then just sleep, that's better. How much time we have? No, it's been way over now. Not way over, but it's been over now. But um, yeah, so we have some pretty exciting things going on. Pro string and stuff going on. Go check that out. We have last month of merch if you haven't gotten merch yet just go grab that quick because we're about to take that down and then the last day will be september 4th and the last day will be september 4th and um when does it come out september 3rd <laughs> <laughs> like, all right sorry if you didn't get your merch but um yeah thanks for watching everybody if you made it this far thank you for watching um again engagement is huge for us we're trying to get to 2000 subs so Make sure to get active in the chat. Um, send the podcast to people. Sub to the channel. This stuff is huge for us. And if you still made it here this part, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Talking to you, man. Subscribe. <laughs>